Now in this question we have one principle. The principle states that in order to establish the tort of negligence, it must be proved that the defendant owed a duty of care to the plaintiff. The defendant breached that duty either totally or partially and the plaintiff suffered damage as a result of the breach of duty. The facts of the present question are Jogi Seth had a leather factory consisting of 250 workers since 1990. There was a sudden increase in the production and therefore he employed 20 more people. The new workers joined but even after 5 days of their joining he did not provide them with the safety attire and devices. On One of the new workers burnt his hand due to his carelessness whether the factory owner is liable for the negligence or not. Now, uh, taking into consideration the, pr the principle and the facts in the present question, we can say that the correct answer would be C. The factory owner will be liable because he employed the worker and did not provide them with safety with any safety gear. Now, the principle. The principle clearly states that in order to establish the thought of negligence, it must be proved that the defendant, in this case the factory owner, owed a duty of care towards the plaintiff. In this case, the the worker. And the defendant, that is, a, and that, and the uh, defendant, meaning the factory owner, breached that duty. That is the duty of care towards the factory owner, either totally or partially. And the plaintiff suffered damage. Plaintiff, meaning the worker, suffered damage as a result of the breach of duty. So, the f uh, what can be uh, deduced from the principle and fact is that the the factory owner had the duty, had the duty to provide safety gears but he did not do it as is clear from the facts of the question it's, it was because of this the new worker burnt his hand and 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 therefore uh, the factory owner will be liable making C the correct option mm, now in this question we have four principles principle 1, principle 2, principle 3, principle 4 Principle 1 says that Article 14 of the Constitution of India provides that the state shall not deny to any person equality before the law or equal protection of the laws within the territory of India. Article 14 does not forbid classification or differenti uh, differentiation which rests upon reasonable grounds of distinction. Principle 2 states that a single individual may be treated as a class by himself on some peculiar facts or reasons applicable to him and not applicable to others. Principle 3 states that the state shall not discriminate against any citizen on the ground only of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth or any of them. Principle 4 states that person laws are not subject to fundamental rights. Now the facts of the present question are the government of India passed the Hindu Bigamous Marriages Act which rendered bigamous marriages void in India as well as criminalized the offense of bigamy in India. The act however applicable to Muslims residing in India. Uh, Mihir challenged the act on the ground that it resulted in discrimination of Hindus vis a vis Muslims. The allegations raised by Mihir were countered on the basis that Muslims constitute a separate class of individuals who should be treated differently because Muslim personal law permitted men to have poor wives decide. So, taking the facts and principles into consideration, first of all, it's important that we uh, understand that Principle 4 clearly states that personal laws are not subject to the fundamental rights. Moreover, Muslims are governed by their own personal laws. Uh, the Act, the Hindu Bigamous Marriages Act, it only renders bigamous marriages void in India. It that is, it imposes restriction on the Hindus. So, taking these three points into consideration, uh, we can say that out of all the four options, the correct option would be D. The Act is valid as Muslim personal law allowed men to marry more than once.